Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Parenti, for letting us into wonderful worship, worshiping our God through beautiful music and sounds and beautiful words. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, how is everyone feeling now? How is everyone feeling? How are you doing? Wonderful. Excellent. Everything is fine. So excited to listen to the word of God. Are you excited? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. yes. I hope you are ready. So let me start with a question. Have you ever been captivated with a beautiful something beautiful like a picture or a painting? something beautiful scenery that you couldn't look away. Just think about that. Do you have any moment like this in your life? When you look something, you could not turn your eyes from that moment, from that thing. Maybe you see beautiful sunshine in the morning, sunrise in the morning, or you saw beautiful sunset in the evening, or maybe you see some beautiful beaches, or piece of art like painting, or you read a story book. You could not stop reading that whole book. That kind of feeling, do you have? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. yes, we do have. A lot of times we do have that kind of feeling in our heart. So in the same way, God looks us in the same way, in the same sense of captivation, or like same sense of admiration. When he looks toward us, he cannot stop looking at us. He keeps on looking. He does not turn his eyes from seeing us. He always wants to look at us. Always. Like something that captivated his mind, his heart. So today, our team is enthralled by my beauty. Enthralled by my beauty. And we are going to see from the Bible, Book of Psalms, chapter 45, verse 11. And we will see what it means for God to be enthralled by our beauty. So to begin, let's see first the meaning of the word enthralled. You see in the title, enthralled by my beauty. We know the meaning of by my beauty. But what is the meaning of enthralled? So when we say someone is enthralled, it means they are captivated, charmed, and completely absorbed by something. Imagine reading a book, story book or a novel, or something exciting story that is so exciting, so interesting, you can't put it down. You want to finish all the chapters. You want to finish that whole book in one city. You don't want to put away. I will read tomorrow or the next week. You don't want to say that. Why? Because you are so captivated by the story of that book by the twist and turns of their book. Or maybe think about a sunny rainbow after a heavy rainfall. When you see a rainbow in the sky, the colors are so beautiful, so attractive, that you find yourself 
completely looking at that beautiful rainbow. You want to look for a long time. You don't want to look. You don't want to take your eyes from looking at that beautiful rainbow. So this feeling of being completely caught up in something's beauty is what we mean when we say enthralled. So another word is captivating. It's like when something is so fascinating that you can't help but you are drawn to that thing. So when we say here enthralled by my beauty, so it means you are so beautiful, I am so beautiful, that whoever looks at me is enthralled by my beauty. So now, let's see the scripture, Psalms 25 verse 11, which says like this, Let the king be enthralled by your beauty, honor him, for he is your Lord. Amen. So this Psalm 45 is often regarded is a royal wedding song celebrating the union between a king and his bride. It has a historical significance. It also foreshadows the union of Christ, the king, and his church, the bride. In verse 11, we will focus on verse 11. It emphasizes the beauty of the bride that captivates the heart of the king. The king of kings the Lord of the universe, the creator of the universe, who is Jesus, looks upon his bride, that is the church, as beautiful. When he looks his bride, that is church, and we are the church, he feels so captivated looking toward us. Through his act of salvation, he removes all the ugliness of sin and bestows upon them a new beauty. We are redeemed in Christ. We are saved by the work of salvation of Jesus Christ. And all the ugliness, all the bad things, all ugly figure of our spirit has been renewed by his blood. In Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 27 explains that Christ gave himself for the church to separate her from the world and bring to himself. When Jesus comes in the air to take his bride, the church, to heaven, there is second coming, she will be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. The church being washed by the blood of Jesus every day until Christ comes again. So he is washing every one of us, making us beautiful more than Esther. Today we are beautiful more than Esther. Tomorrow we will be more beautiful than today. The work of the Holy Spirit is going on in our lives. But what is this beauty referred to in this verse? The king is enthralled by our beauty. So what is the meaning of this beauty in this verse? It's not about our physical appearance. It's not about our clothing, what kind of clothes we are wearing what kind of branded clothes we are wearing, or what kind of jewelry we are wearing in our body parts. It's about the beauty that comes from within, from our hearts, and the character transformed by our new identity in Christ. This beauty is not superficial, it's the beauty of transformed heart, a renewed mind, and the life that radiates his love. While our culture often emphasizes external beauty, but God's perspective is different. He values the beauty of a gentle and kind spirit, 
a heart that loves and serves others in holiness. When we see the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 verse, 31 verse, uh, chapter 31 verse 30, it reminds us that true charm and beauty come from a heart that fears the Lord. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. In the same in the same way, First Peter chapter three verse four and three and four encourages us not to solely looking outward adornments, but to cultivate an inner beauty that is precious in God's sight. So when we show kindness, love, and respect to other people, we display the kind of beauty that it tells God. Further in verse 11, the bride is told that she should recognize her husband, he is her Lord. In essence, she should honor him with full devotion. Our honor for him is expressed through obedience, reverence, and worship. When we recognize God as our Lord, we acknowledge his sovereignty, his authority, and his rightful place he holds in our lives. So holiness is a beauty that goes beyond appearance and extends to the purity of our hearts and actions. In our modern world, beauty is often distorted and misunderstood. The worldly culture places a strong emphasis on external appearances, which leads us to comparison and feelings of insecurity. Many of us struggle to perceive our own beauty, our worth, our value in the same manner that God perceives it. When we look toward our brothers or sisters, our friends, in our left or right, we easily come to compare. Am I beautiful than my friend? Am I uglier than my brother, my sister, or my siblings, or any other person who comes in front of my, in front of me? We easily get trapped in the game of competition. And we feel insecure when we come to find out that I am not beautiful as much as the other person. And we lose our value, we lose our worth. It happens in our daily lives. Why? Because we focus our beauty in the physical appearance. How does my face look? Did I put my sunscreen in my face today or not? Did I buy the branded cosmetics items or not? Did I buy the branded clothes or any jewelries or not? We put our value, we put our worth in those external material things of this world. If I possess those expensive things and I put myself, I am beauty, I am beautiful. And people will like me. People will adore me. Why? It's just because of what I have possessed in my life. All those external appearances. As a believers, we are called to counteract this trend by embracing the divine beauty of God's character within us. Let us affirm that we are entirely fascinating and breathtakingly beautiful. From the truth, from the truth of the word of God, we can confess, we can affirm ourselves, I am truly beautiful. I am fascinating. We possess a stunning beauty 
that captivates not only those around us, but also our King and our God. We hold this truth by faith. When we say that, when we confess, when God says that you are beautiful, and we align ourselves, the principle of God's truth. But when we listen to the worldly voices, you are not enough to be called beautiful. As we see in the beauty presence of this world, maybe this world, maybe this universe, or this something something in our countries. There are certain measurements that can be measured and that can be called that they are beautiful or not. Mostly, it focuses on outwardly, physical and material appearances. But when we look into the Word of God, the king of the universe is enthralled by our beauty. So, what do we have inside of us that the king of the universe should be enthralled by looking at us? Do we have diamond jewels? Do we have, are we smart enough to be enthralled by our king? We don't. No, we don't. So, what is that in us that makes Christ, that makes the King in truth when He looks at us? The one and only thing is because He lives in us, because He created us, because we are created in His image and in His likeness. His spirit indwells in our heart. We are chosen by Him. He saved us. He bought us with His blood price. And He is working every day in our lives to make us the most beautiful bright that we ever see in our lives. And He is waiting. We are waiting to welcome our bridegroom. When he comes down in the air, in the cloud, which we call the second coming of Christ, we will be uplifted to live with him forever. So he puts that high standard of beauty, the eternal standard of beauty in our lives. But most of the time, we feel hopeless there I am not beautiful as much as my friend or my sister or my brother. And we look down ourselves. My dear friends, we don't have to look down ourselves. We don't have to see ourselves in a very low way. He has put his standard of beauty in our lives. He says that I am in trouble by looking at you. Let's think. Parents, when they have their firstborn child, when they welcome their firstborn child in their family, the mother and the father, they could not stop looking at their precious newborn child. They want to look at their child all day and night, no matter what is going around them. They want to look the beauty of their child. In in woman, one moment they were looking at you and me. Our parents were looking at you and me. More than that, the Heavenly Father, the Creator, the King, He wants always He wants to look at you without taking His eyes away from our lives. Day and night, whether we sleep, or we stand, or we awake, or we work, or we are reading, or we are doing something against His will, or according to His will, He always keeps His eyes being enthralled by our beauty. 
That's why in verse, in this verse, it says that the king is enthralled by looking at our beauty. So let's put these principles into this into action this way. Let's focus on our inward beauties. For example, we can say that your laughter is so beautiful. Not just like, oh, your glasses is so beautiful. Your shoes is, I like it. We can say that things all day long. But let's focus our heart on seeing inside of our friends. We can say, your kindness is so bright. I like your kindness. I like your, I love your loving face. I'm so happy being with you. Thank you so much for being a friend of mine. I love your presence. I love to meet you every week, every day. Thank you for being compassionate toward me. Those kind of inner beauty. Let's make an effort to see the inner beauty of the person, not just superficial beauty, what they are wearing and what they are doing. Let's think, throughout this whole week, think about what that beauty resides in that person. So in the conclusion, Psalms 45 verse 11, it gives the truth that our inner beauty born of a heart transformed by Christ's love. When we get transformed by the love of Christ, the inner beauty get born in our life. So this verse beautifully illustrates the profound relationship between Christ, the ultimate king, and his church which emphasizes the value of reverence and devotion toward our King. As we embody the inner beauty of a gentle and kind spirit and honor Christ as our Lord through obedience and worship, we reflect a beauty that resonates eternally, transcending the superficial and radiating the profound grace of our faith. So let's focus on the inner beauty that resides in us and in our friends' lives. And let's appreciate what that beauty they are carrying in their life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, as we think about the words of Psalms 45, verse 11, we remember that true beauty comes from having a kind and loving heart. Something that's more important than just how we look. In a world that cares a lot about how we appear, help us to understand that being close to Jesus and having a gentle and loving spirit matters the most. So us how to follow and honor you in our actions and prayers. Let our lives be like a bright light that shows the lasting beauty of being connected to you. Lord, we bring our offerings before you. You are the giver of all good things, and we are grateful for your provision and care. Bless these offerings. May your name be glorified through our cheerful giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.